261, hymn number 261 on the red hymnal. So I'll stand and join us singing, we're to walk with the Lord in the light of his word. Amen. Shall be rooted out. But Heavenly Father, help us now as we study this wicked woman 
and God, there are many clones of this gal running around and uh, protect us from these people. And God, save their souls. Uh, God, uh, but Lord, uh, if they don't get saved, help them not to mess up Christians or the church or the living God or your work of, uh, of the gospel. And I pray you protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, again, as I said Wednesday night, you need to have some wisdom when you walk in this world. You need to know who you're dealing with. Um, and many people that are doing evil things, they will try to paint themselves as good people. They want to fool you. Uh, they want to get your money. They want to get your reputation. Uh, I, mean, I mean, there's all kinds of different motives. All the motives are bad. Okay? So we have to know who we're dealing with. Um, we're going to look at five things this morning about this evil woman. I want you to notice that the Bible says that evil women are strange persons. They're strange persons. Um... When you meet them, there's something off about them, okay? There's something off. Now, look, sometimes you meet people and it's just like old home week. It's like you've known them all your life. Um, you say, well, should I just take people at face value? No. <laughs> and you know how I know this? I used to do this when I was younger. I didn't know no better. Uh, that's one of the things that Brother Bill was sitting around to help me with. Um, and, and, you know, there's a couple times I got slapped upside the head, back of the head for being a dummy, for being taken in by, by strange people. Um, I suppose this could uh, uh, be true of, of men. Um, but usually, uh, um, I don't know, uh, men... Men don't come across as strange. And men that do come across strange are usually ostracized by the whole society. Or at least they used to be. She's not like other people around her. Maybe she doesn't want to have a family. Maybe, you know, kids aren't her thing. Uh, maybe she prefers, you know... Uh, something, maybe she likes to go motorcycle riding on Sunday instead of coming to church. You know, there's all kinds of, I'm not saying motorcycle riders are strange. But I'm just saying if something takes the place of normal things in people's life, and see, we have a whole chunk of society in America that the, the world has tried to get us to accept as Christians. We don't have to. We don't have to. Now, that doesn't mean we don't try to get them saved. But these people are strange people, and they're not approved of God at all. Numbers 26, verse 61, uh, talks about two men. It says, and, and Nadab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. Now, the reason I bring up this passage here is because... It was a thing to take incense and go burn it at the altar of the Old Testament tabernacle. But that those coals had to come from the altar that was in front of the tabernacle. If someone brought some, some fire from their house, it was strange fire. And they weren't allowed to do that. Well, these two old boys decided, well, we don't have to follow that rule. God, God loves everybody. I'm just going to take this. Well, they died. Because you don't break God's rules like that and live. There's all kinds of rules like that. Uh, you know, God has this little thing he invented called gravity. I guess someone thinks, okay, I'm just going to jump off this cliff, you know, with no plane, no wings, no, you know. Um, I see these people that have these uh, weird little suits you can put on. And I, I call them the flying squirrel suits because that's what they remind me of. And, and they hold out the arms and there's little built-in like wings. And, and then, then a lot of the, the smart ones have a, like a parachute glide thing on their back that comes out after a while. They're the smart ones. Uh, the ones that ain't got no brains, the ones that just jump off the cliff. And I, I don't think I do that. Um, 
Some people don't even like to get on planes, amen? amen. Uh, but God made women a certain way, okay? So why did God make a woman? Well, God made a woman to be a, a, a wife and a, a mother. And to tell you the truth, she was the teacher of the little children in the house. Before Daddy ever got a hold of the children, or uh, the boys, she was in charge of teaching the boys. Because Daddy was out, you know, hunting, farming, whatever Daddy's did in Bible days. So Mama was home, and, and if the kids knew how to read, Mama taught them. Uh, and that was so not too long ago. And then we got finally got public schools. One of the reasons we had public schools come along is because we had so many immigrants come in from Europe after the World Wars. And these people did not speak English. Their children did not speak English. And if they were going to integrate them, and these people were legal, but if they, we figured out if they were going to integrate into American society, they had to learn some stuff. And the most efficient way to do that was to start a public school and run them all in there every day and teach them stuff and then have them go home. And they found that they didn't have to do this year round. They could do it like nine months a year. That way they could have the summer off. Um, but uh, strange has an interesting connotation in the Bible. Genesis 35, 2. Uh, then Jacob said unto his household, Jacob is leaving uh, Laban and coming into the land to promise, and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. So strange women like this, they, uh, they're connected with strange gods. They're connected with uh, not being very hygienic. There's something wrong with their clothes, folks. We're going to study some of these things. Uh, he said, what did Jacob do? He went and he said, look, I want God to bless us. You've got to put this stuff away, guys. You've got to put it away. Um, you know, I don't know what, what young people expect when they get married. But married life is different than single life. See, that's the trouble with having all these babies out of wedlock and living together and all this stuff. Um, there, there's, no, there's none of the regular things that God created that should happen. When you get together, your husband and wife, and you got kids, you're a unit, you're a family. Your job is to raise that family and take care of that family together. And when your children go out into society, they hold their head up and say, well, my mom and daddy were such and such and so and so, and my name is so and so. There's nothing wrong with that. You ought to have a name you're proud of. Uh, unfortunately, in the Bible days, um, these strange people, and this is an Old Testament thing, are connected with foreigners. With foreigners. You see, they were supposed to go into the land and they were supposed to conquer the land. That land didn't belong to the Canaanites. It belonged to the Jews. God gave it to them. And they were supposed to get rid of those people. The trouble is the Jews were kind of lazy and they didn't get rid of all the people they were supposed to get rid of, so they had a problem with all these people running around who weren't Jews, who didn't worship Jehovah, and it became a problem. It was strange. Exodus 18, 3 says, And her two sons, of which the name of one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. The kid was named an alien in a strange land. That's the Jews going down to Egypt. Well, they weren't Egyptians, they were Jews. And when they went down there, well, they really didn't belong there. So why did God send them there? God had some stuff to teach them. And we as Christians, we're strangers in a strange land. Not only were they a strange person, but these women had a speaking problem. You said, well, you said that about the man. Well, guess what? Speaking problems and evil go together. Always listen to what people say out of their mouth. Children, pay attention to the first thing out of someone's mouth when you meet them, especially for the first time. Proverbs 6.24, to keep thee from the evil woman, 
from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. These, these women like to flatter folks. Oh, don't you look so pretty. Oh, bless your heart. Uh, you know what? You run across someone like that, and that's the first thing they do is, is flatter you. They don't know who you are. They never met you. How can they flatter you? Hey, that's a problem with me. I want to get to know somebody before I start accepting flattery from them. As a matter of fact, I, they, they need to be a pretty good friend of the family before I, I take, take flattery. Because, you know, especially down south, flattery can cut. Flattery can cut. Uh, this woman, not only is she a flatterer, but she uses words to get her way. You ever met somebody like that? Male or female? Psalm 5, 9. There is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward parts is very wickedness. Their tongue is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Psalm 78, verse 36. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, they did, they, and they lied unto him with their tongue. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in their covenant. These people here depicted in the Psalms are people that say something that's different than down in here, and they try to hide the hatred or, or envy or whatever, the bad things they have to another person, and they use their mouth to, to try to cover that up. If you ask God to help you, he can show you those things. Jesus was real good at spotting this stuff. Proverbs 7, 5 says that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger with flowers with her words. Proverbs 7, 21, with much fair speech, she caused him to yield, and with flattering of her lips, she forced him. Now, some of you adults need to go read the whole of Proverbs chapter 7. You will see what's going on there. It ain't good. Years ago, a lady went to a party uh, at the British Museum. Uh, she expressed contempt and dissatisfaction at everything she saw at the museum. She just didn't like what they had on display. Uh, she protested it that it was a waste of time to continue and urge the company that she was with to uh, hasten their departure and leave. Finally, they politely thanked the gentleman in attendance and were about to leave when he detained them uh, by, following the, by the following address to their hearty woman companion. He said, When I first saw you, madam, I was struck with your beauty an interesting appearance. But you soon gave me occasion to change my opinion. I pity the man that marries you, for if any ever will, certainly I would not. I fear for you lest some alteration takes place in your taste. I, I fear for you unless some alteration takes place in your taste, manners, and habits. Madam, I wish you a good day. And then she, he escorted the group out of the museum. Many years after this passed, and the same gentleman waited on another company at the same museum. When they took their leave and thanked him for his polite attention, a woman stepped forward and expressed her gratitude in a manner more lively than the occasion seemed to require. The gentleman, rather surprised, professed himself happy on having contributed to her amusement. Sir, she said, my obligation to you is far exceed those which you conferred this morning. She then recalled to his memory the previous mentioned circumstances that happened many years ago in the museum. I am that woman, and to you I am indebted next to this gentleman who is my husband for the happiest influence on my life and character arising from the very pointed but helpful reproof which you administered to me that morning. Uh, you know, you may look at this story and say, well, that guy had no right to talk to her that way. It's a good thing he did. Sometimes somebody needs to put folks in their place. These people have spiritual problems, something that should concern Christians. Uh, you know what? The Bible is all full of typology of 
of women who are types of the Holy Spirit and types of the body of Christ. And these women, uh, the good women in the Bible, uh, some of them are vulnerable. Some of them, some of them are very wise. But uh, God, God always are protecting these women because they try to be good women. But then the Bible picks out you know, somebody like Jezebel. Well, God had to get rid of that gal because they had a real bad spiritual problem. Hebrews 13, 9, Be not carried away with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace and not uh, with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Uh, now, now the Bible makes it very clear that there are strange people and they have strange teachings. Look, there are actually women that go around and profess to be, you know, psychical or some of them even profess to be witches. Steer clear of those people. You witness to them once and then get away from them because they're bad people. You say, have you run across those kind of people? Yeah, I have. When I was over in Florida town with Brother Bill years ago, there was a whole coven over there. They used to meet in the woods. Um, one day I was delivering papers one afternoon and I came across this little uh, deserted section of woods over there down, down by the old Florida town area where there was a wooded area and I noticed there was kind of a smoldering smoke coming out of the woods and I thought maybe it was a fire. You know, it was started, it was gonna be a forest fire. Well, I, I got out of my car, parked the car and got out and, and went to see what was what. And there was this circle and a little bonfire that was dying. And, and I, I, uh, I called the fire station and uh, they said, yeah, we know about that. Uh, and the guy said, there's a coven of witches that meets in that wood. And you probably came across their, their site where they were doing things. Uh, I got I prayed a lot that the rest of that day. Um, that and I got to admit it was creepy. It was creepy. See what's wrong with these people? Well, they leave the spiritual training if they ever had any. Now it used to be women were the ones in the family that learned. You know they learned how to read at an early age and and, and many times you know mom would teach them how to uh, sew and knit and do all kinds of things. That, uh, you know what needlepoint is. There's a lot of old needlepoints in museums throughout the country, where, and a lot of them, most of them, have Bible verses on them, because they would train them, and they would teach them to pray and and ask God. And, and a lot of times, when the rough old man would would, would marry a woman, she would kind of have to uh, uh, train him a little bit and tone him down. You know, don't 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 bring those muddy boots in here. You either take them boots off or you wipe that mud off when you come in his house. Uh, you know, well, get your elbows off the table, dear. You know, that sort of thing. You say, well, it doesn't really matter. Really? What are you teaching your kids when you act like a gorilla at the table? Psalm 119, verse 53. Horror hath taken upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statutes have been my song in the house of my pilgrimage. The psalmist there says, look, I, 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 I come across these uh, uh, things and they just to fill me with horror. Thank God when I was on the road, I, I was treated to good people, uh, sweet people that uh, fed me and put up, would put up with me. Um, and these families would invite me into their home for meals. And a lot of times I'd stay in their spread bedroom or something while I was traveling. And it was always a great thing when a good godly woman was in charge of the household. I knew I was going to sleep in a clean bed. And there was going to be soap in the shower and stuff like that. Um, but you know what? I I've heard all kinds of bad stories and I've seen videos and, and documentaries on, on people that just, you know, they, just, they leave that kind of stuff. Uh, they leave the promises of God. Joshua 24 says, If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he had done you good. 
Joshua said, look, God's going to come and do good to you, but if you turn your back on him, God, God's going to get you. And that's what happens to a lot of women nowadays. Um, some of them get on YouTube and they whine and they complain and, and then they find out, well, they're not exactly living right. And I think to myself, well, what do you expect, lady? You can't treat God like that and not expect to, you know, make him mad at you. Uh, and these people end up with a sorrowing problem. Their life doesn't turn out very happy. They have depression problems. Now, I'm not saying everybody's got clinical depression. I'm not saying that. There are people who have clinical depression. There's something wrong with the chemistry in their body or something, and they have to take medicine to help them. But if you've lived a lousy life, it's going to depress you. Because you're going to look around and you're going to suddenly realize, well, I've done this to myself. 1 Samuel 1 9 says, So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of her soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Verse number 12 says, And it came to pass that as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah. She spake in her heart, only her lips moved, and her voice was not heard thereof. Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away that wine from thee. And Hannah prayed, answered, and said, uh, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have uh, drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy uh, handmaid. For a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken thereof. Now here's a good woman that is praying at the temple, and the, but the first thing Eli thinks is, oh, this is another one of the wacky names. She done got depressed because she lived wrong. She done, she done took some of the, the, the family's the cooking cherry. Uh, and, and so he thinks she's uh, this, this wicked and she doesn't realize that all she wants is a baby. Proverbs 7, 26-27 says, For she has cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down unto the chambers of death. These people are, in a, if they don't get saved, they're in a downward spiral. I'm talking about truly evil people that do evil things. I'm not talking about your average, everyday Job. Death is their final destination, folks. They can't have a positive life because they're involved in wickedness and selfishness, and that never leads out to a good place. Bob Jones said the right road leads out at the right place, where I can say the wrong road leads out at the wrong place, a place you ain't going to like. Not only that, but there's something wrong with this lady and her friends. You say, your friends? Yeah. People sometimes kind of gather together. And, and good women do it too, but they do good things. Uh, there's people that get together and have like a missions thing where they, they get together and they make things for missionaries and they pray for the men. I, I think that's a great thing if women want to do that. But then some of them get together and they just raise all kind of trouble. Um, this woman has had, that the Bible talks about here, she's had a permanent bad effect on her friends. Shame on her. Lamentations, verse 9, talks about a woman like this. Her filthiness is in her skirts. She remembered not her last end. Therefore she came down wonderfully. She had no comforter. O Lord, behold my affliction, for the enemy hath magnified himself. The adversary hath spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things. For she has seen that the heathen entereth into her sanctuary, whom didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation. All her people sigh. They seek bread. They have uh, given their pleasant things for meat to relieve the soul. See, O Lord, and consider, for I am vile, become vile. Boy, that, I, if you're a lady here, I hope nobody ever says that about you. That's a horrible thing to say about a woman. Um, 
There's a story about a young woman who was strongly moved under the pleading of the gospel. Uh, she would often uh, hear the preaching and she would weep in the church. Uh, her pastor watched her with interest and she, he wanted to see her brought to Christ. After a time, she quit coming to church and he didn't see her in church. So he went to uh, inquire of her mother of why she would quit coming to church. The lady was a widow and she replied weeping saying, Sir, I fear my daughter hath met with companions who are leading her sadly astray. The pastor did his best to restore this girl to the right path. His efforts were in vain. She had given her heart to this folly and her friends and would no longer listen to the voice of, of duty or the Bible. Not many weeks elapsed before this young woman, while busy over her sewing, suddenly dropped her needle and collapsed on the floor saying, Oh, I'm dying. The inhabitants of her house placed her on the bed looking, wild, <coughs> looking wildly about. She said, I see heaven and hell before me. I cannot get to heaven. Hell is in my way. And then she died. Then she died. Now, this, this goes on thousands of times in our country every day where people have bad companions. The paths of life are unattainable to her acquaintances. This is a, now let me tell you, this is a type of the Antichrist church in the Bible. This woman. That's how bad this woman is. Ezekiel 19, verse 12. But she was plucked up in fury. She was cast down to the ground. The east wind dried up her fruit. Her strong rods were broken and withered, and the fire consumed them. She is, uh, and now she is planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty ground. A fire is gone out of a rod of her branches which has devoured her fruit so she had no strong rod to be a, a scepter to rule this is a lamentation and shall be for a lamentation I don't know who they're talking about there but that's terrible a lot of women do that to their children and their husband and you ruin the family mm -hmm. Zephaniah Zephaniah 2.15 I didn't write that on the sheet of paper, so I'm going to have to do this after night. In the Old Testament. What page is that for now? I think I passed it. I know this table of contents somewhere in this Bible. It says, This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am and there is none beside me. Ha! Huh. That's something for anybody to say. How has she become a desolation, a place for beasts to go lie down in? Everyone that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his hand. I don't want anything to do with that. Don't be that kind of person that people just don't want to be around. Be the kind of people people like to be around. Revelation 7, 5. And this is his type of Mystery Babylon. And upon her head, forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Revelation 18, 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon is fallen, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. That's a type of an evil woman. Their life just turns to evil. And the end of their life, they're horrible, sad, wicked little people. Don't be like that. Uh, and, and children, purpose in your heart not to be an evil man or evil woman. The evil man is a picture of the Antichrist. The evil woman is a picture of Satan's church. Revelation 18, 20. 
talks about this. And it says, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the craftsman, for whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more in thee at all. In other words, God's going to put a stop to all this stuff one day. I'd be on God's side of her. So, Brother Jeff, this is a depressing sermon. Yeah, it is. And I asked God yesterday, I said, God, I had to preach on the evil guy Wednesday, and I'm preaching on the evil woman on Sunday morning. I said, God, get, give me something bright. A gentleman had a lovely Chinese plaque with curious raised <coughs> figures upon it. One day it fell from the wall on which it was hung and was cracked right straight across the middle. Soon after, the gentleman sent to China for six more of these valuable plaques to ensure uh, an exact copy of, of the one he had. He sent the broken plate uh, as a copy. To his intense astonishment, six months later, he received in the mail six plates and his injured plate back. He found that the Chinese were so faithful following his copy that each new crack had a crack right down across it just exactly like the one he had said. So what, what does that story mean? Uh, well, people are going to have faults. And, and even good people have faults. Don't copy people's faults, okay? Copy the good things. If there's anything to copy, it's good. Now, so what needs to happen with these people? Well, they need to get saved for one thing. And if they're saved, well, they need to do a lot of confessing. You say, have you met saved people like this? i got to say, in my, my experience in the last, all these years I've been saved since I was 13, I've probably run across maybe uh, a handful, four or five people like this that claim to be Christians. Most of the other ones I've run across were not Christians at all. Didn't profess, didn't want to be Christians. You say, why do you tell us that? Because the world's full of them. And we have to be careful. Parents, we have to be careful. You got grandkids, you got, you got nephews and nieces, warn them. Teach them. Because if you teach them right and you teach them this book, and you teach them the benefits of going with God, boy, I tell you what, that's a great thing. To pass the family down pass the value of the family. You know what? Y'all, I'm going to say this because I believe it. I think Brother Shiver, Eugene Shiver would be proud of y'all. I really do. He worked hard to do what I'm telling you. And it was tough. He was a truck driver. He went home a lot. Your mom and, and him and uh, you know what? They did a lot of I know they did a lot of praying. And it was worth it. It was worth it. And you know, if he were standing here today, he would say, "Pass, keep it, pass them on." Children, learn from your mom the good things and pass them on. Because one of these days you're going to have some children, and you want to see them good to be good men and good women. Women. That's what. Look, you say what makes America great? Good men and good women make America great. It doesn't have anything to do with politics or anything else. It's the character of the people that live in this country. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, well, thank you, God, for good people. I thank God I got good people. And God, it's a blessing, Lord. God, I pray you give us some more good people. Lord, uh, thank you for that sign out front. Lord, help people see those little, that little picture of a church with an open door, God, on it. Help them to know that they're welcome. And God, help the truth always to be preached from the pulpit. Thank you, Lord, for the good people we have here. God, I, I thank you for them, God.
God, come get us and take us to heaven. But if you leave us here, help us to have an influence on our, on our community and God, our country. Because, Lord, that's the only hope they have is good Christians that show the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. Help us to be good pictures of you, God. Help us to reflect you. Bless us now as we go. Protect us. Bring us back tonight to hear your word. Thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name.